Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And thank you all for joining today's informational, informational webinar about applying to the This is Public Health Global Grant Program. My name is Dorothy Biberman, uh, Director of Global Engagement and Executive Initiatives at the Association of Schools and Programs of Public Health. And I will be the moderator for this session. During this webinar, um, we will talk a little bit about the um, requirements for applying to the program. We'll hear from two uh, previous grantees from the first cohort, and we will have time for Q&A at the end. The TIPH Global Grant Program is uh, run by the Global Network for Academic Public Health an alliance of seven regional associations that represent schools and programs of public health around the world, including the Alianza Latinoamericana de Salud Global, uh, the Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health, the Association of Schools of Public Health in Africa, the Association of Schools of Public Health in the European region, the Association of Schools and Programs of Public Health, the Council of Academic Public Health Institutions Australasia, and the Southeast Asia Public Health Education Institutions Network. Together, our associations represent over 450 academic institutions in more than 100 countries. Um, and our goal is to enhance academic public health worldwide through mutual learning and collaborations between academic public health institutions globally in order to improve and protect the health of people and the planet. This will be the second cohort of the TIPH Global Grant Program. The first cohort awarded grants to 20 public health institutions across 18 countries. Uh, the projects, which included teaching effective hand washing, counteracting COVID-19 misinformation, improving antibiotic stewardship, and promoting education and careers in public health, among many others, um, beneficially impact the communities around the world. The vast majority of respondents to our post-program survey rated the program and their experience with it very highly. And we look forward to another successful cohort as we move forward into this application phase. Uh, just a couple pieces of um, uh, logistical information. You can ask questions at, in writing at any time during the webinar by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and typing your question into the pop-up box. Um, we will answer as many questions as possible at the end of the webinar. And now it's really my pleasure to introduce our speakers for today's webinar. Um, first, we have Dr. Richard Riegelman, a professor and founding dean at the GW University Milken Institute School of Public Health. Uh, Rebecca Fournier, manager of global engagement at ASPPH. Dr. Marcelo Villon, uh, associate professor in the School of Public Health at the University of Chile. And Dr. Emmer Farron, associate professor of health policy and administration at the University of Philippines, Manila. And with that, I am going to pass over to Dr. Riegelman. Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, I'm very pleased to be able to uh, talk to you a bit about the background of the This is Public Health uh, global uh, activities and uh, to uh, hopefully in, uh, have you think ahead to uh, your involvement. Um, the, um, the goals of the uh, uh, this small grant program are really to increase the visibility of public health education, um, as well as to uh, provide opportunities for faculty and for students to uh, really uh, unleash a, uh, the innovation and the um, new ideas that um, are uh, so abundant, I, I think, in, 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 the, in the faculty and students around the world. Uh, this program really began uh, as a um, uh, outgrowth of the uh, This is Public Health program in the United States, which was started uh, by ASPPH over a decade ago, and has really been um, one of the key elements in the enormous growth of uh, undergraduate public health, but public health as a whole in the United States that has occurred uh, 
even before the uh, the pandemic, and uh, certainly the pandemic has opened lots of people's eyes to the um, to the importance of public health. Um, the um, in in uh, 2019, uh, we uh, built on uh, uh, this is public health um, in the United States and, and developed a uh, grant program uh, with the um, uh, this is public health Europe, and uh, we were just Im impressed by the, uh, the quantity and quality of applications that we received, and that program uh, really uh, set the stage for um, the, um, the this is public health global. And um, the network, um, which you've just heard about, um, which has developed in the last um, two, three years, has really a remarkable accomplishment and a re really a remarkable um, potential activity. And uh, we thought that it was important to uh, be able to provide some, uh, some, ac um, some activities that reach down to the members of the organizations. Uh, so you can really um, see the potential here and hopefully be able to uh, present uh, your uh, results at uh, regional meetings, uh, as well as have a chance to have a global um, impact in, uh, in the new ideas that you came up with. So that um, the first round, uh, we that, uh, certainly uh, that occurred, as you've heard a tremendous uh, number and uh, quantity and quality of, of, uh, of uh, programs. You can hear about a couple of them in just a few minutes. Um, but um, we, uh, a lot was done, a lot was learned, and um, I think this new round will build on the uh, successes that occurred in uh, the 21-22. Um, and so this will be the uh, second round, and uh, we um, hope that you'll find uh, this is something you want to participate in. Uh, it certainly um, has great potential to uh, really uh, change the uh, visibility of uh, um, public health education and to really help grow and um, strengthen the, uh, the global network. So I look forward to hearing uh, the presentations uh, and um, wish you all well in, in being involved. Great, thanks so much. So hello everyone, uh, as Dorothy said, my name is Rebecca. I'm the manager of global engagement at ASPPH. Uh, and as such, I'm going to be operating as a point person for you all should you have questions beyond this webinar. So my contact information will be available to you on the last slide of this presentation. But for now, I'm gonna walk, be walking you through some of the details and expectations of the TIPH Global Grant Program. Next, please. Great. So the TIPH Global Grant Program is a one-year program that awards 20 grants of up to 5,000 US dollars to academic public health institutions worldwide for them to develop campaigns that increase the visibility of public health outside of the United States. Collaborations are encouraged if appropriate. Next, please. Great. So we're gonna be talking a bit about the application process now. The, there are two parts to this award, part A and part B both of which are required in the application. We'll go over these two components in more detail momentarily. We strongly prefer submissions to be in English, but if this is not possible, please reach out to me directly so we can discuss how to proceed. That being said, social media posts or other marketing materials are encouraged to be produced in the language most appropriate for your audience. Our staff can work with you to translate the phrase, this is public health, for you to use throughout the project. Applicants will of course be expected to follow all guidelines provided by TIPH Global and are required to provide a mid-year update, a final progress report, detailed description of project costs and to participate in the final showcase. At the start of the grant period, each grantee will receive 70% of their funds with the remainder distributed after the mid-year report is approved. So going to a little bit more about Part A and Part B. So Part A is where applicants will describe the project plan. This is the component to which all funds are attached and assessment criteria will include creativity, the tools of quality, and the potential impact for the criteria outlined in the request for applications or RFA. All applications will require general institutional information, but this includes a letter from the regional association confirming membership, and we suggest seeking this out well before the submission deadline to ensure you're able to submit a completed application. Applicants will also be required to upload a two-page proposal for Part A to an online form, following the formatting and including the components outlined in the RFA, which are listed here. Part B pertains to the Student Ambassador Program, for which every applicant is required to propose one student from their institution to participate. There are no funds associated with Part B. However, again, both Parts A and B 
are required for an application to be considered complete. Proposed students should have a functional knowledge of English in order to participate fully in the elements of the program and must be currently enrolled in a degree program at either the lead or a collaborating institution identified in Part A. Graduate students are preferred, but undergraduate students in their last year of study will also be given consideration. This program aims to amplify the voices of public health students worldwide. And the Global Ambassadors will be responsible for a number of communications, including blog posts, a video about their love of public health, and providing answers to a questionnaire. They should be considered a resource for dissemination of project communications, but they will also be considered a member of the project team. Next, great. Uh, the grant applicants will be required to provide basic information about the nominee they've selected and submit a nomination statement explaining their student selection. Applicants will also upload a one-page essay written by the student, which responds to the questions you see here and which are also listed in the RFA. Next. At a high level, the expectations of the PIPH Global Grantee are one, that their project promotes awareness of public health worldwide, outside of the US, and with an emphasis on local communities. Two, that they are able to identify and describe funds and or in-kind support to match the award amount. Three, that they propose a currently enrolled student to participate in the TIPH Global Ambassador Program. And four, that they submit complete and on-time midterm and final reports, as well as participating in the final showcase. In terms of the budget, uh, budget proposals for the project described in Part A should be written according to the formatting outlined in the RFA and should contain the full amount requested up to a maximum grant award of 5,000 US dollars, a line item budget description detailing the project costs, and a description of matching funds and or in-kind support with the calculations used. Please note that grant funds will be dispersed in US dollars, meaning that lead institutions must be capable of accepting US dollars, um, and that will be your responsibility to um, figure out. Next, please. So in terms of eligibility, um, outlined in greater detail in the RFA, that most fundamentally, all projects must impact a community outside of the United States, and all applicants must be an academic public health institution that is a member of one of the seven regional associations belonging to the Global Network for Academic Public Health. They're listed here, as well as in the RFA. Proof of such membership is required for the application in the form of a letter from the regional association written on their letterhead. As stated earlier, it's recommended you seek this letter early to ensure all components of the application can be submitted by the deadline on December 9th. And please note that prior grantees of TIPH Global are not eligible to apply for this grant as the lead institution. However, they are permitted to be listed as collaborators. Next. All application materials are due just before midnight, that is by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, USA time on Friday, December 9th, 2022. Applications should be submitted via SurveyMonkey, the link of which can be found in the RFA as well as being provided here. Representatives from the Global Network will then review all applications, assessing each of the criteria outlined here in this diagram, as well as in the RFA. And applicants will be notified in April of their award status. Next. So just an overview of the timeline. Uh, October is when the RFA was released and the grant applications opened. The applications are due, as I said, on December 9th, 2022, by midnight. There will then be a review period and applicants will be notified of grant status in April 2023, with the grant period beginning in May of 2023. The midterm reports being due around November of 2023, and the grant period ending in April of 2024, with the final reports due and participation in the final showcase following. Next. So I am now pleased to turn over the digital proverbial microphone to Masa and Amer, who will be sharing a few words about their experience with TIPH Global. So Marcella, thank you. Hi, everyone. 
I'm very happy to have the chance to share with you uh, our experience from Chile. No? So I will. I would like to to share with you where are we talking from. We work for the TIPH initiative from Chile. So we have a geographical position you can see here. The, our length from our north to south is similar from east to west in United States. No? We, we get inspired by, by Semmelweis. We propose to work in hand washing and its determinants during pandemics. We made a lot of things and we have in mind the reality we had in Chile by those days. We, we were living in a social environmental tension during the last 10 years that were accelerated three years ago. This has historical, cultural, and sociopolitical grounds. So in this context, we focused on hand washing. Hand washing for us is an iconic intervention that has the potential impact to avoid diarrheal diseases and respiratory infections in those fears. But it's relatively um, underestimated. But it's also a social environmental tension paradigmatic example because to have the chance to wash our hands, we need water supply. So uh, the goal of our project was to contribute to better, better visualization of hand washing and its determinants by an advocacy initiative developed by University Coalition. Target audiences were general population and institutional decision makers. We worked in eight phases, we are showing you only five, the main ones. And we produced basically some tangible results, <laughs> different uh, formats of audiovisual and radial capsules. And then we also produced some written uh, text and documents. Um, they had a great impact in our social media, websites, Twitter, and the more traditional ones, including some private and local university TV channel. But they also uh, offer us to um, try to influence in more institutional perspective. No? So we wrote a document oriented to stakeholders and uh, decision makers. Um, we had the chance by this text to, to, to put in value some principles that are relevant for us, no? like solidarity, community care, and, and social environmental tension. We publish there no? in, in the Center for the Study of Conflict and Social Cohesion. Finally, I would like to, to talk about uh, some untangible results. No? We have we had the chance during pandemic to meet each other in a big weekly virtual meetings 
create interprofessional alliances. We work in a team of eight people, journalists, an actor, an anthropologist, psychologist, and three specialists in public health. And had the chance also to develop a talent because we offer with the funds the chance to to develop a drawing workshop to our students and to training in a real format in a global perspective the chance to work with a public health awareness so we were very happy during the process and at the end of the same one thanks Thank you, Marcelo and Emmer. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, good morning. Marcelo, again. can you unshare your screen, please? Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, uh, Marcelo and Dorothy. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to this webinar. Uh, I hope I can impart uh, my uh, share as part of the first cohort, the first batch of awardees. So I am uh, Emerito, I am Emmer, I just call me Dr. Emmer. I'm a physician and as well as an associate professor. I was also former communications officer of our College of Public Health in the University of the Philippines. And my uh, project uh, was about transparency and building trust uh, as well as empowering the communities even beyond the pandemic. Uh, so it is actually our journey and our adventure uh, during the height of uh, the cases. So uh, just for context, uh, we were also coming before, even before the pandemic. I do not know if you've heard of the Deng Vaksha uh, vaccination. It created quite a controversy in the Philippines and it rubbed off with the other immunization uh, programs. So long before there was COVID and of course the COVID-19 vaccination, there was already this inherent uh, fear uh, of most of our uh, people uh, that the, if you get another of these new vaccines, uh, uh, you might get into trouble rather than uh, be well. So for context, uh, during uh, the beginning of uh, COVID-19, uh, we had experienced at least three uh, peaks uh, and the COVID-19 surges. Uh, this has actually overwhelmed our health system and has caused strict lockdowns. Uh, the lockdowns, uh, while preventing the infection, uh, was also limiting uh, economic growth because most of the people in our country are daily wage earners and they lived in small uh, cramped abodes which were not conducive for uh, quarantine purposes. So what we did was to come up with, given those uh, challenges of lockdowns, you can freely move around. Uh, the traffic was suddenly, uh, the, the traffic that we were also complaining about suddenly disappeared because there was nobody uh, left in the streets and everybody was, uh, uh, told not to go, get out. Uh, it, it created the solution. At the same time, it also created a problem. So what we did uh, was to launch uh, several uh, online. Everybody was suddenly online. And uh, we uh, placed our bets in having uh, to build up uh, the reputation again of uh, how uh, beneficial it is to get uh, immunized. Uh, during uh, this uh, uh, time, th there was still no vaccine, but we were already trying to promote the other, also the other uh, uh, existing vaccination programs. Because uh, even if there was no COVID, part of being a public health practitioner was to actually promote it. So we launched this uh, several uh, social media. Uh, this uh, the, the one that you see in the photo is actually our uh, I think Becca mentioned this, the uh, global health uh, uh, ambassador. 
uh, so uh, uh, he actually is promoting it uh, several tweets uh, in Facebook uh, and of course we also echo that this is public health so we emphasize that vaccines are of course one of the 10 greatest public health achievements of the 20th century and that continues to this day it works and of course it saves lives um, added to that uh, we also did uh, a lay fora uh, um, to it's not your usual invite the scientists invite the experts and then talk about you know the things that the, probably the general population also do not understand so we did not uh, do it that way we did a lay fora and uh, probably gather the most common questions of a the the the, the common individual, your regular Joe probably, or uh, in our case our regular Juan, uh, and uh, th that was the simplification of what vaccination, antibodies, antigens, of course COVID nineteen the virus, and the variants that came after it, uh, into terms easily understood. Uh, by all kinds of people in the general population. This was featured, we, oh, we were fortunate to get the support of our lead government agency, the Department of Health, uh, which had the Healthy Filipinas uh, health promotion campaign. Uh, and this was live streamed in Facebook, in YouTube, and our own uh, Zoom account in the university. Uh, and uh, I think it gathered uh, uh, several hundreds of shares and uh, uh, some comments during the time that it was launched. Uh, we also did, uh, we commissioned a video clip, again, in a lemonized form, uh, a video clip in the local dialect on the benefits of getting vaccinated uh, and the simplified version of the advantages of getting also the booster shots. Because uh, while we have already about uh, we are 105 million in the philippines and about 70 a good 79 i think to 80 percent already have the uh, original uh, uh, vaccination uh, uh, one and two uh, but uh, what we are getting uh, during this time now is the low uh, booster uh, intake uh, which i think to this date is just uh, a bit uh, near 20 percent so this was launched during also the lay forum. It was also, uh, we also used the network of our own uh, Department of Health. So it's, it spread actually uh, in all regions of the country. And because we are member of the Asia Pacific Consortium of Public Health uh, Schools, uh, we also tried to share it with our neighbors in the ASEAN region, which is uh, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, Indonesia. So. Uh, during that time. So it was also, as I've said, live streamed in the Facebook accounts and uh, in the university's uh, 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 Zoom and YouTube accounts. Um, and this was actually picked up by our uh, website. And we had also a Healthscape newsletter that is the newsletter of the uh, university. So we were featured there uh, months after. And uh, the, the ones that, that I, I, I was telling you, while the invited people were experts, they were now talking uh, in very laymanized, uh, simple terms, entertaining the questions that probably are not asked by co-experts, but the, by the common people. So it was actually bringing public health uh, and making people understand uh, about it. To this date, it still gets um, uh, 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 engagement, but not as uh, great as it, of course, when we launch it. Uh, to date, uh, just to, for context, uh, we have had uh, the, as I've said, the three to four surges. And uh, as of June, going to November and Christmas, uh, because of uh, the government has relaxed our uh, mask on mandate, and I think the, our Department of Health said that it is rising again. Not as grave as, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting people into the ICU, but it uh, causes people also to be absent from work because you get sick with, uh, and these are mostly because of the variant. So 
what we're trying to move uh, 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 I mean what we're trying to work on now is actually to convince people to get the booster shots uh, uh, so that it will uh, probably uh, help them and of course exercise the other uh, public health uh, protocols that uh, uh, people have uh, probably forgotten because they got tired of COVID. Uh, people get tired of COVID, but uh, unfortunately, COVID does not get tired of us. So I think uh, part of our um, campaign, uh, just for you to share, uh, to share with the, the new ones, the new grantees and the potential winners, uh, is that uh, anything uh, that can go wrong, uh, Anything that uh, that can go wrong will go wrong. Uh, in our case, I think the funds were not given. Uh, we did not receive our funds. What we did in the first few months was actually to make our counterpart, because there is a counterpart funding that we should uh, be giving, uh, so 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 that we can keep the ball rolling. So nothing is as easy as it looks, and everything takes longer than you think it will. Uh, what is the remedy there is that. Uh, if you can have a good small team, which I had, uh, all dedicated and passionate uh, to continue the campaign and spread that, that this is public health, and uh, I think you can, you can be, you will be able to tide it over, and uh, forget about Murphy. Murphy will always be there, uh, but uh, we we can we can uh, do it if. We just, uh, you know, put our heads into it and uh, uh, let the let it happen, but uh, don't ever ever give up. So I think that's the main lesson I can impart to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we will remain vigilant. Uh, I don't think it's over. Uh, it's just the economists in our country who think it's over, uh, and and to complain that the. Uh, People still take uh, their vaccine booster shots and uh, do the normal public health uh, protocol uh, as we move on to the so-called new normal. Uh, thank you. I hope that help. Uh, we are here for to entertain any questions and help you. Thank you, Emma and um, Marcelo, for uh, all of your comments. That it was really great to be reminded of all the great work that both of you did in your projects. Um, I want to remind everybody that you can ask questions by um, clicking on the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and typing in your question there. Um, also, just to confirm, this session is being recorded and it will be available within the next couple of days online so for any of your colleagues who were not able to join today um, they will be able to uh, go back and review it as well i do have one question here about um, eligibility that i will uh, respond to which is essentially about um, you know which institutions are eligible so only institutions that are members of one of the seven associations that make up the global network um, that we went over earlier are eligible to serve as the lead institution, which is the institution that would be applying for a grant. Now, any institution can be a collaborating institution. Um, they would not have to be a member and in fact, um, as Emmer mentioned, you know, uh, often local health departments have served as collaborating institutions, but they cannot be the um, grant receiving institution. Uh, okay, we have a question here about the budget. What type of program costs should be included and what should not be included? Um, Basically, we we haven't uh, been very prescriptive about that in the past. Um, we have covered uh, costs for um, salary 
for uh, members of the implementation team. We have also covered cost for actual production. So I believe Marcelo mentioned um, uh, video and audio recordings. We've covered those costs, um, any kind of print costs. Um, uh, sometimes there have been, I believe, paying for actors. So it's really pretty broad uh, depending on um, what your project is. I believe the only cost that we would not include would be um, uh, general indirects. But anything else, depending on what your project is, would definitely be considered. Um, Again, a question about indirect. I'm actually going to double check that and come back to that question to make sure. Uh, but I believe the indirects are not covered in the grant. Are two people allowed? To... Ah, okay. Are two people allowed to apply through one proposal from the same institution or should they submit a separate application? So um, I would encourage that uh, if more than one person from an institution wants to apply, that they work together to submit a single proposal. Um, it's not a requirement. You can certainly submit more than one proposal from the same institution, uh, but that would be my recommendation. Um, it's more based on what the project is, though, than anything else. Uh, and there can be, we, we ask for one lead person to be the contact person during the application phase. Um, so that would be something that, that you could uh, discuss internally. But once um, the grants have been awarded, we do allow for multiple contact people. I am, I still want to follow up on the question about indirect, but I do have a question um, actually for Emma uh, and or Marcelo, um, which is basically I, wondering if you could talk about, um, you know, what was the part that you enjoyed most? What was the best part of the project and what were some of your major challenges? Um, in implementing the project, uh, I guess, besides COVID, which was a challenge for all of us. Um, so either one of you um, could speak first, please. Maybe I go first. Uh, okay. I, I think the, the, uh, the main challenge, of course, I, was, I, I, I would like to talk to, we, to, to my team. I cannot talk with them because they, they were all sick. <laughs> they 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 got sick or so that that is one thing and um the other one is uh, they're not sick but they were bringing somebody to the hospital so they were also preoccupied so i i, I couldn't make the uh, so i had i had the plans as you know we submitted it before uh this is how it's going to be there's even a timeline uh but you know there was nobody you you can talk to so you had to act and the actually maximize the presence of social media uh, since everybody was on lockdown the assumption of course was that everybody was you know into facebook and into twitter and so make the most out of it and uh, probably just also uh, try to prevent any uh, the original thing that i said was about infodemics the spread of uh, uh, false news so um, that that is the thing so i just i just hang on and of course, uh, I, I, uh, there was this, uh, I thought the back account that I gave would be accepting US dollars. So it turned out that it only accepts our local currency, which is actually pesos. Um, so <laughs> I think there was still a, some, some months that uh, elapsed before uh, that was straightened out. Uh, so, so those were some of the challenges. Uh, it, it is actually administrative, and of course, you cannot do away with the COVID. 
uh, all in all, after that, uh, most of the people who got sick, of course, got immune the natural way, uh, even before there was a vaccine. And they were very, very uh, inspired again to return and do what was left out uh, from the schedule. And uh, we were a bit, a bit slow, but I think we still uh, were able to get back into the saddle and uh, join the race back again. Uh, so I was actually worried we were, we were being left behind. So uh, the, the main challenge was, of course, the uh, COVID-19. So the, the Murphy's Law, as, as you know, happens even, even without COVID. But uh, was the, the, real, the real thing that made it harder was uh, COVID. It was just good that the, our project was related with uh, COVID. So I think uh, those are the uh, things that uh, went well for me uh, in our group. Uh, maybe we can hear about Marcelo's uh, uh, experience. Uh, thanks, Emmer. Um, for me, I think the most enjoyable and most pleasant issues are related with the work process. We experienced a great freedom to create. So it sounds um, it sounds irrelevant, but during pandemics, we had the chance to put our hands in work to work in something that uh, makes sense to us. That was the the most relevant issue for us uh, and we worked together in a team really team with horizontal dynamic with interprofessional um, uh, richness so probably those are the most relevant uh, favorable favorable uh, issues the degrees of freedom to create and to dream to produce something useful and and as emmer um, has been told us uh, probably uh, the lockdowns were the, the main challenging issue but the the, the chance to keep in touch uh, every two weeks uh, was the opportunity also to maintain our mental health and it was very important for me as professor um, to look my students and have the chance to work with them in something useful even though a, a critical um, period. Yes. Thank you both. Um, that was really uh, wonderful and, and enlightening. I appreciate, especially Marcelo, your points about, um, you know, just being able to be in contact with, with people uh, I think we all experienced during the pandemic um, was was good for all of our mental health. Um, I, I do want to follow up and say that I am going to need to get back to you, um, I, I believe Marie, specifically on the indirect cost um, question. I, I believe we'll have your email from the registration, but uh, please also feel free to reach out to myself or Becca um, to follow up and we will get back to you on uh, with a specific answer on that. Um, any other final questions? Um, I believe we've covered all of the ones that have come through. Um, I just wanna give a couple more minutes. If anybody has any final questions, please feel free to put them into the Q&A box. Um, I would like to ask any of our panelists if you have any 
final comments um, or suggestions or recommendations, lessons learned that you want to share um, with the people on uh, the webinar about applying to the program. Um, now is a good time to do that. You know, I think that um, one of the real opportunities here is the opportunity to have exchanges across the globe. Uh, there are so many new ideas that are coming forth, and I, I thank our two presenters today, and I hope that this will be part of the activity as it goes on. That we'll have a chance to really share our experiences, share our ideas, and have a real global impact. So um, I hope uh, many of you will apply and um, give us your ideas. I would um, I would like to say something um, related with Dr. Riedelman's comment. I had the chance to to get in touch with Indonesia, uh, as you saw in the map. Chile is very far from Indonesia, <laughs> but I received an invitation to to develop a lesson there. And it, it, it was a great opportunity to, to know as in a, in a very su superficial way, but to get in touch with other culture and um, very different for, from us. So uh, I will reinforce the idea Dr. Riedelman has told. Uh, for, for my end, uh, thank you, Marcelo. I think for my end, um, uh, uh, on the funding, probably on the budget, uh, you, you might also want to consider what you can, uh, because part of the budgeting is matching. So what you could probably uh, uh, match it uh, the five thousand dollars what can you match it in terms of uh, uh, professional uh, assistance or um i, I don't know uh, equipment uh or whatever uh, you, you can uh, you will also place it in the budget so maybe that you can consider uh, i do agree that uh, we were able to uh, also uh, I think that that is the richness of this campaign is to reach more people and invite them to share the same vision that public health works only if you, of course, practice it. And uh, the, the first step, of course, is um, in knowing uh, why it is good for you. And uh, when, when you do it, uh, you do it together, uh, it makes... Uh, the, the whole thing more exciting and uh, you you get to know these people and you also get to know what uh, why is it very hard for them uh, to understand these things uh, is it the uh, complexity uh, is it the foreign terms uh, uh, it, it is about their bodies uh, first and foremost so uh, Public health deals not with one person, but with the whole community and, and, and population. So uh, I think no matter uh, what you think about as an innovation, uh, maybe uh, some ideas on how to move forward. Uh, uh, be, because uh, there is always this uh, small struggle between uh, um, you know, doing the economic part and of course, doing the public health part. Uh, I don't think it is a choice. I think the two collaborate with each other, but we have to make people understand that they are actually helping each other. So it's health and of course, development uh, for our uh, countrymen. So you cannot actually work if you're sick. And likewise, you cannot be productive if you are sick. So you have to actually look at uh, that uh, particular area, what you can do, so some ideas on how to probably 
uh, do that and how to sustain because people also get tired uh, get tired of always talking about this thing so how do you always uh, you know come up with something new so that you engage them uh, in a very exciting way so i think uh, that is what uh, some of the tips that i can give and we're we're here for you if you would like to uh, ask some tips again uh, in case you think of a new question uh, after this webinar thank you dorothy thank you thank you Thank you, Amr, um, and, and thank you to all of our panelists today. Um, I believe that we have um, responded to all of the questions. If we did miss your question, or if you have um, a very specific question to um, your uh, personal circumstance, um, please do reach out to us. Uh, and I'm just going to share quickly one more time um, our contact information. So <clears throat> here you can see Becca's contact information. Please reach out to her. Um, of course, you can also reach out to me if you go to the ASPPH website, um, and then uh, to the Global Network page. You can also reach us that way. Um, and if you do think of any specific questions for Emma or Marcelo, um, please send those to us also, and we will be happy to forward them along. Um, and with that, I believe that we can end just a few minutes early. Really want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, and uh, <clears throat> for your questions. Um, and of course, to Emma and Marcelo and Dick and Becca for their presentations. Much appreciated. Uh, this recording will be available online within the next couple of days. Um, and again, if you have questions, please reach out to us. Um, and that concludes our webinar. Thank you so much.